Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, honoring Arbor Day on April 26th with an ongoing commitment to sustainable stewardship and conservation of Missouri's forests. Choosewood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. The other way that the leagues are going to make money, and I assume some of this money will flow back to the um, to the to the um, teams, is the apps when they settle bets are going to have to use official league data. Oh, so the leagues can charge the apps for that data. Right. It's supposed to be at a commercially reasonable rate, but what does that mean? I'm Sarah Fenske. Missouri lawmakers are debating this week a bill to legalize sports wagering. This would be the biggest expansion of gambling in Missouri since voters approved Riverboat and ultimately Riverside casinos almost three decades ago. There is a lot at stake here and not just for gamblers. And joining us now with the latest is Rudy Keller. He is the deputy editor of the Missouri Independent. That's the nonprofit news site covering everything that happens down at the Missouri legislature. Rudy, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, Sarah. Nice to be here today. So, Rudy, this bill to legalize sports wagering in Missouri, this is now being debated by state representatives this week. What exactly would this allow? Well, it would allow you to bet on the outcome of um, a major sporting event, such as a professional um, blues um, game or a um, game by your favorite um college team um, such as what was com- it's coming up ne- soon is the is the March Madness NCAA tournament but it won't be in effect until then if the lawmakers do pass it the um, earliest that you could make a bet would probably be around the end of August which is the normal time when um, new laws take effect and if this goes into effect can we just start gambling anywhere on these things go down to our neighborhood bar and place the bet no, there'll be um, they'll, for for you can e- you'll either be able to go to the one of the cas- thirteen casinos in the state and make a wager there, or you'll be able to download an app for your phone or your computer and um, place a wager that way. And these apps will be linked to either one of the casinos or one of the major sports teams. So you might decide. I'm a big St. Louis Cardinals fan, and I'm going to use the official St. Louis Cards sports wagering app from FanDuel or DraftKings or whoever they set a contract with. So is the focus of this debate whether or not overall this is a good idea, or are we already talking about some of the details and whether those make sense? Well, there is a, a, a probably a minority of the General Assembly that would vote against any expansion of gambling, but pretty much this debate is over how to do it, how to tax it, and who gets the money from those taxes. Yeah, I mean, that's a big question here. So for a place like St. Louis that has a casino, do we stand to do better than a community down the road where there's not one within its borders? Well, there is a rule that 10 percent of the taxes on the money lost by um, gamblers goes to local governments. So the for the um, casino um, wagers that are linked to, you know, th- that are reported by the casinos, there there will be some additional money for St. Louis for wagers through those casinos. There, um, but the current fee that is occurs when you walk onto the casino boat, which is a two dollar fee that with a dollar to the local government and a dollar to the state gaming commission to support its activities, there is not an additional um, fee for you logging on to the sports app. Let's say you're in your kitchen and you're um, getting ready to uh, make breakfast, but you also want to put wagers down on the ne- to that day's NFL games. And <laughs> so you do the t- both at the same time. And um, well, there's no, there's no $2 fee, but there is, there are proposals that would tax the your participation in sports gambling from that phone app in your home. It could be a dollar a day for the days that you get on the app. 
it could be a penny a wager and the purpose of the that extra fee according to the legislators who are who are supporting it is to send that money to the local communities because while st louis has the casinos and you're going to get that money that is the city's share for the um out of the the taxes on the wagers the net of the casinos a community like sedalia where the state fair is or cape Gir well not that's not poplar bluff which mm -hmm. is you know down on the arkansas border if somebody's making a, a wager there that there's no benefit to their community from the person making a wager within their community and that's the argument we are going to allow you to do casino type gambling from anywhere in the state of Missouri. And that's the one of the big expansions that, um, you know, so, some people just think, well, that's gonna take money out of my community. How come there's nothing coming back? And so there might be some language or some provisions that would help those communities get a piece of this, is the idea. Yeah, that's it. And so, you know, these apps that you're talking about, it sounds like a lot of this gambling would take place there rather than being on the floor of a casino. You mentioned that some of these are aligned with professional sports teams. Would they possibly be looking at a big windfall from this? Well, I mean, I don't know. So um, it really would depend on the number of customers that they can bring in. So, you know, the, all of the, all six major professional teams that operate in Missouri that have stadiums and the law defines it as a stadium with 11,500 or more um, seats and that would be the St. Louis Blues, the St. Louis Cardinals, the St. Louis um, City Soccer Club, the Kansas City Chiefs, the Kansas City Royals, and the Kansas City current women's professional soccer team. Mm -hmm. So they're all going to have the opportunity to make a contract for that app. The other way that the leagues are going to make money, and I assume some of this money will flow back to the, um, to the, to the um, teams, is the apps, when they settle bets, are going to have to use official league data. Oh, so the leagues now, can charge the apps for that data. Right. It's supposed to be at a commercially reasonable rate, but what does that mean? Um, so if you bet the Cardinals are going to beat the Cubs on a, if we ever get back to baseball. <laughs> um, Big if. Yeah. If you bet that the Cardinals are going to beat the Cubs. Well, that's what's called a tier one bet. And that's simply the outcome of the, of the contest. But let's say you're also sitting there and you want to, and you say, well, I think, um, you know, uh, there's going to be a home run on the next pitch you can bet that there's going to be a home run on the next pitch. Well, you have to wait for the league to score what happened. You can't so just get that from the newspaper. So that's a way for the league to get its cut. It sounds like this could be right. very good for Major League Baseball. Rudy Keller, it's interesting to hear about this. It's going to be so curious to see how these details play out. I want to thank you for joining us today. Absolutely, Sarah, and any time. And Rudy is the deputy editor of the Missouri Independent. You can see his reporting at MissouriIndependent.com. This is St. Louis on the Air on St. Louis Public Radio. This episode was produced by Emily Woodbury with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. If you learned something new from today's episode, consider leaving us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the easiest way to help people discover our show. We appreciate it. Thank you. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, honoring Arbor Day on April 26th with an ongoing commitment to sustainable stewardship and conservation of Missouri's forests. Choosewood.com.